Well, amen. Good to see everybody here today. Y'all come on in, we'll get started. Good to see everybody. Glad you came out. The, uh, it's, getting, it's getting not as hot lately as it has been, but it was sure warm this morning, it seemed like. It's going to be hot today. So, but anyway, it's good to see all of you here out at God's house. We'll get started. Um, don't forget, this coming Tuesday, we have a meeting here at the church for all department heads and leaders um, to meet to uh, look at our church calendar for the next six months to a year. So we can go ahead and put things down on paper so we're not stepping on each other. I'm looking forward to that. Um, we have a, a, a business meeting tonight um, after church. If you'd like to come and stay, come be for that. That'd be great. Uh, for two topics um, that we're going, to, we're going to discuss and maybe vote on. Um, the first one is our youth pastor. Uh, we, we, we feel like we found a youth pastor. We're going to have a, a, a meeting right after church with the youth search committee. Make sure everybody's on the same page. Make sure everything's good. Um, but we're going to have a meeting tonight uh, concerning that as well to hopefully vote on uh, Brother Derek Bradshaw and his wife to be our youth pastors, youth leaders. So um, keep the, be, be in prayer for them today. Also, um, in our business meeting, we're going to uh, ask you guys for us to remain in the Piedmont Okefenokee Baptist Association. Um, about a year and a half ago, we got out of the... Um, um, the state and nationals. So we didn't really get out. We just stopped uh, financing. We just stopped sending money, supporting it. So we've not officially gotten out of anything. We've not officially gotten out of the Piedmont Okefenokee Association, actually. We just stopped sending funds. Um, but it'd be, our, it'd, it'd, be, it'd be my leadership. I'd like to see us start putting money back in the Piedmont Okefenokee for the simple reasons our, our, I'd like to be a part of these churches right here in this community because we're all conservative mostly here. And there's 64 churches that we could all be a part of here. I'm not interested in the state level or the national level. This is just for our local Baptist churches we could all work together and be a part of. I know that um, our RAs and GAs are, are done here on the local level. So our, our boys who do the um, um, derby cars, um, they, can't, they can't operate in the, in the associational der, uh, derby car stuff. And uh, we've had a few other things come up, but um, just so that we can, I think it's 4% that goes to the association. And it goes to help churches and bring in speakers. We can be, we can have meetings with other churches, Sunday school training, uh, choir training, uh, music training, all these things with our association here, not state and not national. But uh, be in prayer about that. Um, don't forget ladies' recipes. Got one more week to get those in. Also, ladies' retreat. Uh, to, uh, September 16th here at the church. Um, any other announcements I might have missed? Yes, ma'am. Oh, there's a sign-up sheet in the hallway across from the ladies' uh, board for um, what we're going to run after the activity shower. Um, we're going to have some food. And it's a nice food truck. Everyone come. I need everyone to sign up for two items. There's two sections there. Um, that's on the 19th. Of what month? Of this month. August. Yes. August 19th. Okay. Be the next bulletin. Okay. Um, any other announcements? Um, prayer requests. We have uh, Brittany Deal, Chris O'Berry, uh, Sabrina Williams, Marilyn Baxter, um, Tori and Brantley, Darlene Lee, Fred Carter family, the Pat Bennett family, and Travis Rainey. Travis Good? Good. Any other prayer requests? Jerry Hayes. Jerry Hayes. Jerry. Any others? Any others? Any unspoken this morning? Amen. Let's pray for each other, lift each other up. It's good to be in God's house today. I know that... Um, um, a lot of people getting getting back in school. Son's getting ready for school, and everybody's busy, school shopping, all those things. But it's good we take time and 
and, and stop and all come together and meet together for church. So let's make this time valuable for the next little while. And let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Lord, love you. Thank you for today, God. And just so glad, Lord, that you um, impressed on folks' heart to show up at your house today. We, we thank you, Lord, that you're alive and well in our lives, Lord, that you still do miracles. We're, we're praying, God, for those that are uh, providentially hindered. We're praying for those that are, that are sick. Lord, we're praying for those that are sin sick. Uh, Lord, there's, there's so many on our prayer listing. Lord, I, I, I lift up my cousin Nathan, who I forgot to put on our prayer list, uh, who's having so many troubles with his liver. Just pray, God, that you'll, you'll uh, bless him and take care of him. All the prayer requests that's been mentioned, Father, you know each and every one. Brother Tony Lang, just pray, God, you'll touch him as well. And, uh, Lord, the decisions they're making there now, to whether to come home or stay there, God, I pray you make it easy for them. And, Lord, I pray you work things out in their lives. There's so many, Lord. You know each and every one. Help us today to honor you as we come into your house, to sing in such a way that brings you glory and not us. And help us, Lord, to love each other and that, that love. Just grow and grow until the time you come for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would visit around and shake hands just for a minute. Hey, we'll come in, grab you a white book, turn to page 516. We're going to sing When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. Hey, are you ready to go? Listen, if it, if it was today, would you go? I mean, when they called names, would your name be there? See, that's the question. That's the question. Go ahead, sis. Do y'all have a book? Because y'all just looking around. It's like one of them new praise and worship songs Brantley sang. Y'all just looked up here. So listen, do y'all know that song? Y'all better sing. Find me something to throw. 
Okay. Let's start that again. he lives. Boy, it's good. It's good to know you're saved. It's good to know where your eternal reward lies. It's good to be secure in your salvation. Go ahead, sis.
he's alive today. Amen. Amen. So mindful this morning and grateful, Lord, of the many, many blessings, Lord, you give us, Lord. We are so thankful we can come to a place like this and worship you, Lord, and sing songs of praise to you, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that be acceptable to you, Lord. But we've come to a part of the service where we give back just a small portion of your blessing that you bless us with in the way the tithe and the offering. Lord, we just ask that you accept it, that you would. Bless it, Lord. Bless the giver, Lord, of light, Lord. And I pray that we would use it in a manner that's worthy of you and your kingdom. Good Brother Ray, as he stands before us this morning, and presents your word, Lord. I pray for that lost person that may be here. I pray that they would turn their life to you before it's eternity too late. And we'll just honor and glorify your name through it all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
to us. Take your Bibles with me this morning. Look in Judges chapter 13. Judges chapter 13. We got the running of the children yet. Okay. Oh. Got everything? Yeah, don't forget the sucker. They dropped that sucker and picked it up. Amen. Judges chapter 13. It's a good place for scripture. I, I tell you, over the past several weeks I've been studying Samson, been uh, praying about, uh, it's, it's kind of one big long story. And when people, people preach on Samson, they usually preach his whole life story in a, in a big instant. And uh, you... Uh, most people, most people, what they know about Samson uh, is, is they look at him as a big strong guy, big, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger um, kind of guy, big strong, you know, because in, in Scripture, strongest man that we find in Scripture besides Jesus, strongest physical man in Scripture. Um, truth is, you won't find anywhere in Scripture where he is big and strong. You won't find any spot in Scripture where it shows that he's big, ripped up, and big, tall, skinny fella. You know, I, I'm reminded of that. Um, Charles Atlas. I forget what his last name was, but it wasn't Atlas. Uh, in the early 1900s, he, he came over to the U.S. with his family. They settled in Brooklyn. He went to the beach with his girlfriend. And you remember, you remember uh, the stories in the comic books about Charles Atlas and kick, guy getting the, kicking the dirt. And this, that really happened to him. And uh, he was 97 pounds, and his girlfriend fell for the guy that kicked dirt in his face. He said that would never happen again. So he started working out and working out using um, direct tension. He didn't use weights, but he used tension um, with his own body. And he began to work out. And the next year when he been, went to the, to the beach, somebody said, Man, you look like Atlas. So he legally changed his name to Charles Atlas. And he, boy, he was big and big and strong. You could tell he was the guy. And that's probably the most saw, the most people look at that. I can remember when I was a kid, uh, we saw that, that uh, comic book strip and all the stuff. We'd get things, well, they want you to buy into their stuff and um, uh, all, all their things. And, and they said it's the, it's the, it got the most propaganda of any other clipping or commercial in history. Charles, everybody knows about it. Everybody can think about it or see it. It's kind of like the, I, mean, I told him when we were singing, I was showing her how to sing the Oscar Mayer jingle. Anybody know it? Everybody my age knows the Oscar Mayer. They have no idea. You know, uh, B-O-L-O-G-N-A, you know. Well, they don't know about that. But um, Charles Atlas began that way back then. But you could tell he was big and strong. I get to thinking about um, um, Samson, and I just wonder if he was a 97-pound weakling. Because, you know, he didn't do anything unless God showed up. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that he, would just, he just walked around and was a big fella. Man, I appreciate you. That he just walked around and was a big fella and pushed people around and done it. Listen, only when God moved was he able to do anything great. Only when God showed up could he do anything with any kind of power, any kind of control, or any kind of, of great brute strength that people stood back and was afraid of him. I mean, when he, when he, when he pulled the gates off of, off of Gaza, when he ripped the gates off and towed them up on top of the hill and sat them down, he, he pulled the posts up with the gate and put them out there. Listen, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be something if a, if a little small 97-pound weakling snatched those gates out? And th there was people laying in wait outside the city to kill him, matter of fact, and they decided they'd leave him alone. You know, if man's toting the gates of the city outside, I'd leave that rascal alone. He might use the gates to kill me, you know. Uh, we, we find out he, he used a, a jawbone of a donkey to kill a thousand people. Uh, so it's, listen, his, his, his martial prowess was on, on display all the time, but it was never done. It was never done um, 
from something he decided he wanted to do in his own self. It was always when God showed up. It was always when God showed up. So I want you to think about this morning. Sometimes we think that we think that we can live our lives the way that we want to, and we can dictate when the Holy Spirit of God shows up, and we can dictate this, and we can plan for that. Listen, we should be living our lives in such a way that the Holy Spirit of God is welcome with us 24 hours a day. Amen. Not just on Sunday when we decide to show up. Some people don't come to church hardly ever, but when they get here, they expect to be blessed. Oh, come on now, don't look up here at me like that. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Haven't been to church in a long time, but when you do come, you want God to show up in great wonder and majesty, and you want to feel something, and you want to leave here on cloud nine. We better entertain you. Everything better be done just right for you, or you might not come back for another three or four weeks. Oh, come on now. Listen, that's good preaching whether you like it or don't. The thing is, is we think that we can order the Holy Spirit. We think that somehow or another, we're in charge of when the Holy Spirit of God shows up. Listen, I got news for you. We're not. We're, listen, we're just beggars trying to tell other beggars where to find bread, man. Listen, we, we have to find ourselves begging God and showing up and, and being thankful and then begging God to show up at that place. Oftentimes in our lives, we, we expect God to do things. We, we come any old way and we want God to do any old thing and do what we tell him to do. And I'm going to jump off here in the early part of Samson's life and we may have several weeks of Samson. We may have one. But uh, I'm going to jump right off here. And, and, and Judges chapter 13, verse 24, just keep your seat. The Bible says, and the woman bare a son, called his name Samson. child grew, and the Lord blessed him. The Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtal. Lord, thank you for your word. God, you are worthy of our praise. Lord, this morning as we sang, God, praises to you. Lord, I, I pray that it honored you. God, as we've read your word, God, I pray it honors you. God, I pray even now that as we move ourselves aside, Lord, there's nothing we can preach if you're not in it. There's no power in anything, God, unless you show up. Lord, we beg you, God, to show up in people's lives this morning. There's people here that need a touch. Lord, there's people here that need to see some things. There's people here that need some answers today. Lord, I beg you, God, to show up with power and mercy and forgiveness. Lord, we pray that you show up in a way that when we leave here, it'll be unmistakable that we met with God today. We love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here we have in, a, in, in this book of Judges, well, Israel has sinned again. Israel's come to this place where they seem to always be, always backing away from the things of God. And they find themselves, once again, in bondage by the Philistines. Um, matter of fact, this was a 40-year uh, uh, stretch of bondage. Um, and the way, that, the way that Samson's born is, is something that is kind of reminiscent of a few others in Scripture, like Zechariah and Elizabeth. We know that Manoah, his wife's name's not mentioned in Scripture, but in chapter 13, uh, Manoah's wife gets a visit gets a visit from the, from the angel of the Lord and, and is told that she's going to have a son and that that son will be a, uh, a Nazarite from his birth. There's two different ways to be a Nazarite. One is self-imposed, and you can do it for a time. The other, other Nazarite vow is, 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 is from birth. And it lives throughout the life with you. Now, and what that means is, is you're not to cut your hair. You're not to partake of anything from the fruit of the vine. Uh, just regular grapes, fermented grapes, anything from the fruits of the vine. Any of those berries that can be fermented to make wine. You're not supposed to have any of those. And you're not supposed to touch a dead body. There's it it's, it's probably more things, but those were the main things. Those were the things that were the, the, the crux of the matter. But the big thing was, is that the Lord had showed up to Manoah's wife. And she went to Manoah and said, hey, a man come told me we were going to have a child. And the next day they saw the, the man out there again, and Manoah went, went to the man. And the man, the, the angel of the Lord told him, said, listen, that's exactly what's going to happen. You need to beware and get ready because you're going to have a son, and, uh, and he's going to be a Nazarite from his birth. Let me ask you a question. I think that sometimes that we, we, think that, we think that we can live however we want to live. I know that Samson's life, he was a Nazarite from his birth. God blessed him from the outgo. But, you know, when we got saved and accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, you know, we came a little bit like that. We came a little bit like Nazarite. Amen? There's some things now that we look at and say there's some things we shouldn't be doing. 
These things was, was commanded in Samson's life, but we as Christians, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we want to be like Jesus. You know, I think sometimes we forget that. We, we have this idea that once we're saved, well, we can just, everything's good then. Even when we mess up, man, we get to go to heaven, even when we do dumb stuff. The idea, though, if you're a truly saved person, you want to begin to act like Jesus. Listen, there's parts of you that wants to put off what you used to do and how you used to do it. There should be a desire in you to make your life like the life of Jesus. We ought to be, we ought to be changed. You know, be, listen, I remember when I got saved. Anybody else? Amen. Hey, I remember before I got saved and, and the person I was, and I'm thankful for what God's, God saved me from. Listen, I'm a living testimony that, listen, uh, you, you can be saved from the church pews. Uh, I think, I'm not sure who wrote the book, but it's called Repentance in the Pews. And it talks about people that come to church week after week that finally get saved. They've been in church their whole life, but they finally recognize where they are. And I think it's important. I believe there's a lot of people today that just get kind of inoculated to the gospel because they come to church all the time. They're in church things. They've been around church stuff. And they think because they feel good when the music's playing, that somehow or another, that means that they're saved. The only way that you know you're saved is when you gave your heart and life to Jesus. Come on. When you gave your heart and life to Jesus and he saved you and you begin to start acting like him. Because if you can act like this world and it don't bother you, you are not saved. If you can carry on the things of this world and do them without any recompense, without any worry, without any doubt, without any issues. Listen, you ain't a Christian. Hey, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, I'm not saved any different than you. But I can promise you, if this old boy gets out of the will of God and starts doing things away from God, or, or my, my study time begins to get uh, uh, swapped out for just regular reading time or TV time, the Holy Spirit comes by and taps me on my shoulder. Hey, and I know that there's things I need to start correcting. I know there's things I need to put God first in. Listen, being a Christian ain't laborious for me, man. I'm glad to be in the family. I've already been adopted one other time in my life. I'm glad to be a Macmillan. I was a heron. I was a heron. Good, bad, or ugly. I was a heron when I was about 15 months old. Fella drove up. Man and a wife drove up and paid $200 for me. Over at my uncle's in Winoker. Paid 200 bucks. What a deal. $200. Years later, my daddy told me it wasn't but 100. I was like, you couldn't let me live with a 200. But as I think about that, you know, listen, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to be a Macmillan. Listen, I'm, I'm proud of my mom and daddy. I'm proud of the way they raised us. And I look back now, and listen, the same way when I became a Christian this month, 31 years ago. Listen, when I gave my life to Christ, man, I got in a new family with, 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 with new wants and new desires and a new want to. Listen, if you didn't get a new want to when you got saved, you didn't get saved. Listen, if you didn't get some new desires when you got saved, you didn't get saved. I believe there's a lot of people today just, just flat ain't saved. I think they came when it was a good time. Maybe they got impressed at a, at a summer camp or maybe they got impressed at church where a big singer was there or a big evangelist was there speaking and somehow or another they made their way down to the front, but they've never been saved. Listen, you know whether or not you're saved. If you fell dead right now, would you go to heaven? Listen, if the rapture of the church took place, how does that make you feel? Yeah. Hey, I know that I doubt, man. If the rapture took place, I'm heading out of here. Yeah. I can't, listen, I'm, I'm looking forward to being in heaven. And the older I get, the more mature in Christ I get, the more I look forward to seeing what's on the other shore. Yeah. Listen, yeah, I've got to pass through this veil of death if the rapture of the church don't take place. But listen, it's worth it. Because I'm going to be with Jesus. Listen, there's going to come a day. Well, there won't be any more worries, no more fear. We won't be praying for Brother Tony and Miss Rachel down in the hospital. Listen, there's folks that have been through sadness and trials and tribulations. There won't be no more of that. Hey, I'm looking, I'm looking to see a shore that, that, is, that, is, that is beautiful, that it's never dark, that it's always daytime. Listen, I'm looking forward to being where Jesus is at. Hey, I, I didn't have, the, I didn't have the, the ability or the fortune to, uh, to live on earth when Jesus walked there. So I've never seen him. I've never I've seen pictures of him. I, I doubt any of them's like him. I hope he's a fat rascal, you know? Wouldn't that be something? Some of y'all, I, I, I told y'all, I told you. Wouldn't it be something? Hey, when you get to heaven and recognize that, that Jesus is more like you than you ever thought, 
You recognize that he loves you and he's the same kind of guy as you are, same kind of guy. Listen, I'm looking forward to being in heaven, but I got to make sure that my election is sure. I got to make sure. And that's what I'm doing with you this morning. I want, listen, I want to hang you over hell every now and then. I want to make sure that you know that you know if you died today, you would go to heaven because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You're not guaranteed. It I, seems like for whatever reason, I wind up doing all the youth or the young people that die in our community in, in Charlton County. And over the years, uh, so many children, so many children. And, and it's always a shock and a surprise. It is to me too. I just, you, just, you don't ever know what might happen today. Today. I can't tell you how, how surprised I was when a young lady was, uh, that went to our church at Hickox who lived in Folkestone got up one morning. She was going on vacation with her boyfriend's parents and her boyfriend. They were going down to the beach or going to do something. And she was going over to their house about two miles away just to go over there and meet them. She left her house, got a half mile down the road. Something happened, not sure. Her car flipped over, threw her through the sunroof, and she was killed right there on the side of the road. Just, just like that. Just 16, 16-year-old 16 girl. Gone. Listen, I'm going to tell you, this, that part about heaven and hell and death and life is real. Yeah. And you better be ready. You better be ready. The angel of the Lord come by and said, said, listen, he's going to be a Nazarite from his birth. So you get ready. He told his wife, I said, you better be careful. And, and uh, Moses is, uh, Manoah's, Manoah said to his wife, I said, we're going to die. He said, we're going to die. Surely we have seen, we have seen God. We, we're going to, we, need, we need to pay attention. Let, it, let us be that serious about the things of God. Hey, we may surely die if we, don't, if we don't honor God and give him all the praise and glory and worship he's due. Let us live a life of expectancy that, he, that the Lord might come back today. This, this might be today. Listen, you might not have to go home and, and warm up them scraps you ate yesterday. This could be the day. We might not have church. Now. This could be the day. Listen, your next house payment, you might not even have to make it. Everybody all right with that? Amen. Listen, the Lord might come back before. Now, go on and make your house payment. I'm going to tell you that. Uh, don't, don't just sit around and say, well, I hope the Lord comes back. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hold off on that. But let's, let's read a little further here. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move. Verse 25, chapter 13. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtel. So we know that, that the Lord was, was moving in the life of, of uh of Samson. There's a couple things that, that I don't know if you know about Samson. I, I don't know that he was a big giant guy. He, he probably is an average guy. Um, I think that uh, God's miracle on him would have been greater had he not been a big guy. So I've always kind of thought that, you know, he, he may be a, be a small guy. He was also a judge. He wasn't just a, you know, he, listen, he was a judge of the, of, the, of the people of Israel. So he was put in a place of, of leadership and he was distinguished. And, but the boy had some problems. Boy had a lot of problems. Listen, the guy, the guy wound up having some addictions uh, that, that, that wound up uh, getting him in some serious trouble. Watch what it says here in chapter 14, verse 1. Samson went down to Timnath, saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, go get her for me to wife. They weren't supposed to have wives of the Philistines. Weren't supposed to have them. Listen, they were supposed to marry inside their Israelite it, the Israelite people, they, they, listen, they were slaves of the Philistines. They weren't supposed to be taken of the, of the Philistine world. They was waiting for the deliverance of God to get them out of there. The last thing the leadership needed to be doing, listen to me, the last thing the leadership needed to be doing was imbibing in the things of the world. That's what it says. Listen, the leadership, the leadership. I'm reminded of 2 Kings chapter 22. Well, the Bible says that, uh, that, the, that the young king, when he came to, came to battle, he got right first. His name left me for some reason, but, but he got right first, the young king. At eight years old, he began to reign. Anybody know his name? Josiah. I should have known. That's a big fish he caught Friday, amen. But, hey, listen. When Josiah come on the scene, you know what he did? You know what he did first? He got right. He got right with God first, and then he led the people in a nationwide, listen, in a nationwide revival. Lord, that we would have leaders in our country go through revival. Well, we don't never hear about them getting held up. So why'd you get held up? Well, our church is having revival. I just couldn't leave and come vote. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be something if somebody got up there on, on CNN News or Fox News and gave a testimony about how they, how they just gave their life to Jesus? 
They won't ever show us that. This evil world won't ever show us the good things that God's doing in this world. We just got to know that God's still doing them. Hey, listen, I'm excited. There are some people that are Christians today that I never, that in the spotlight in Hollywood, that I never thought would be Christian. But God has miraculously saved them. Guess what? They're not doing any more movies. Hollywood don't want them. Why? Because they're blood-washed, born-again children of the king now. And, and, and I got news for you. It's going to get worse as time goes by. Here we have, here we have Samson. Here we have Samson. Told his mom and daddy. He said, I, I kind of like this girl. I know I'm not supposed to have her, but you go get her for me. Wow, how does that sound to you? I never told my mom and dad to go do anything. I can't ever remember telling daddy, Larry, here's what I want you to do. That never happened at our house. I'm scared to say it now, amen? <laughs> Listen, that never happened. We, ne- we never had that conversation. I never had to apologize for telling my dad to do anything ever. And here's what he says. He said, listen, go get her. His father and mother said to him, verse 3, Is there never a woman among the daughters of the brethren, among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me. You'll find out here in just, just a little while. Uh, he, he, uh, she don't please him very long. She sides with the Philistines, because that's what she is, against him. And he makes a statement. He makes a statement. He said, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you had not found out my riddle. We find out here that every step he was making was a wrong step. It seemed like, it seemed like every time we hear about Samson, and I know all the children's books that we read shows Samson, big mighty guy, and he, he kills that lion, that young lion in the vineyard. He ain't supposed to be in the vineyard. You all right? He's not supposed to be around the grapes. He's not supposed to be out there. But we have these stories that have begun to change over time that our children see Samson as a big, great... Listen, he's in the Hall of Fame in Hebrews chapter 11 about his faith. But I can't hardly see it in in, in Judges because I'm given a picture of a man who doesn't want to honor God, who professes to be a Nazarite on the outside, but on the inside, there's something going wrong here. Can I tell you, there's a lot of people today that's living an outward Christianity, but not an inward. There's a lot of people today that's saying all the right things on the outside and shaking their head and hallelujah and amen when it's the right time. But on the inside, they're far from God. And it comes out every now and then. It just it pops out every now and then. I don't know, I don't know I'm not a soothsayer or anything like that. And I, don't, I don't believe I'm a prophet, just a preacher. But sometimes people's... People's inside shows up on the outside. Does it ever bother you if you're in here this morning and, and, and you may be truly saved, but you're away from God? Does it ever bother you that God might look your way and frown? I think about Peter as, as Jesus was being, being beaten. And the Bible says he turned and looked at Peter because Peter wouldn't come up there and stand with him. You know, he told Peter, he said, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows tomorrow. Before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. When the rooster crowed the third time, he looked over at Peter and didn't say a word. I wonder, I wonder what was in that look. Has Jesus ever had to turn and look at you and touch that area of your life? Has he ever had to turn and look at you and say, hey, there's some things you ought to be maturing in. There's some areas of your life that you ought to straighten out because I'm disappointed in you. Has that ever happened to you? What's well, happened to me? There's been some areas of my life I've had to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, Lord, I want to get these things right. I want to be right before you. When you look my way, God, I want to be peace and happiness. I want you to be happy with the way I live my life. Don't you understand somebody's watching you? Don't you understand that if you're a Christian, somebody lives inside you? Amen. Don't you understand those things? Samson told his dad, he said, go get her for me before she, she, she pleaseth me. Uh, we, we find out here that he told his daddy, go get her. Um, the Bible says in about verse, um, chapter 13, about verse 5, I think, it says, I believe that's the right verse, it says that, um, that Samson would begin to deliver Israel from the Philistines. He would begin to live. Nowhere in Scripture does it talk about anybody else beginning something. He's the only one. But he also doesn't ever finish. He begins to do a work, but he doesn't finish it. He starts out okay, but he doesn't finish okay. Oh, we say, well, he winds up at the pillars. You know, he pushes them down. He kills all these Philistines. You realize what he is to God, right? He's a vessel fit for the master's use. God knew the decisions he would make, good, bad, or ugly. 
and he put him in a place where he could do the most good for the kingdom. Yes. God put him in a place where he could do the, do the most good for the kingdom. Is, is God using your life right now for the most good of the kingdom? I mean, what are, we, what are we doing for the kingdom? Listen, I, 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 our church is growing. There's some things that we got to do and things we got to have around here. And, and uh, this ain't a commercial by any means. Um, this is just me telling some of y'all that, uh, that, that, that God's called some of you to teach. God's called some of you to do this. And I wish you'd answer him. Because, listen, we, we, we're going to need some help coming up here before long. Our Sunday school's growing. Our class, listen, we got young adult classes. Um, we, we talked about starting a, a, a class just for older couples coming up here sometime in September. And, and there's just some things that we want to do here at the church. But, but we need everybody's help. Listen, if ain't just four or five people doing the work here at the church, the rest of it is just bench warmers. You all right? Everybody needs to be involved in the process of, of getting the work done here at the church and, and, and being involved in everything with the kingdom. Does God look your way and is he proud? Was there a time you was more fired up than you are now? Lord, forgive me because, I, I, listen, I can say yes because there's been times in my life, man, I was, I was hitting on all eight cylinders. There was times, man, where I can look back. Man, it just felt like I was in the very presence of God all the time. Listen, uh, I'm doing okay right now, but I might not be tomorrow. You know how it goes. Listen, there may be a time this coming week I struggle there may be some decisions that I have to make that I have to stand back and take pause and make sure I pray through and ask God to help me. Do you ever, do you ever get in that shape? Lord, keep us in the straight and narrow. Keep us in that path where he says that, 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 that many are looking for, but few find it. See, we're, we're going to be different than the world that we're living in. But he told his daddy, he said, go get her for me. That's, that's the attitude of the world. Samson never seems to mature. Never seems to mature. Church, let me ask you something. How are you growing in your spirituality? I mean, what are you reading? Or, 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 or what, what kind of preaching are you getting? Um, you know, Sunday nights we run maybe 70, 80 people. Wednesday night we run about the same. We run 70, 80 folks. We run a bunch of young people back here in the back. But a lot of you adults are only getting church once a week. Now, I ain't being ugly or preaching on it or anything, but I'm just saying some of you only getting church once. Are you sure that's enough? So what, what else are you getting? People say, people say, well, I listen to Oprah. Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> well, I listen to Dr. Phil. Yeah, you, you go ahead. You know, uh, Dr. Phil was talking on her one day and talked about, um, had a mama on there and, the, and had a daughter and a mama. Mama had her spoon. Had her spoon. And a daughter, they got her on the show and they was going to make fun of the mama for spanking her child. I said, we better turn that off. Because, uh, I, I, listen, my mom used to whip us whatever she'd find. Amen? Yeah. And I look, I look back. I was never abused or never beat. But listen, I got news for you. I needed everything I got. And it wasn't always just spankings. I, I used to hate having to stand in the corner. I used to hate having to be quiet. Go ahead and whip me. Don't send me to my room. Lord, don't send me to my room. That was before cell phones, computers. All you had there was a book and a bed. That's it. You know, back in, day, back, back, back in the day before air conditioning. Some of y'all didn't grow up with air conditioning. We didn't grow up with air conditioning. And hey, listen, that, or, or they tell you to go outside and sit on the steps. Ah, uh, what about the steps? But it, it, was, it was some punishment. You know what they were doing? They were, they, were, they were trying to conform me to their way of seeing things. It, there was always the talk. Uh, don't talk to me. Don't, 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 don't talk to me. You know, and I always knew that if I was uptown cutting up, Lynn, my daddy might come uptown. I'd see him uptown every night. He, he'd ride through on Friday nights just to let me know he would do it. And he'd have his shirt off. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> Daddy had, we had an old 60-something 60, 60 model Volkswagen van. Daddy was a big boy. Hey, and him sitting in front of that van with no shirt on coming through down, I thought, who's that man? <laughs> you know, they said, that's your daddy. You know, yeah, I'm going home. I'll see y'all. Going home. You listen. You know what they were doing? They were trying to conform me to what they thought. That's crazy because I always wore my shirt uptown, amen. But they were trying to conform me to what they thought I ought to live like and what I ought to do. You know why? Because their mom and daddy taught them. Amen. Moms and dads, let me ask you something. What are we conforming our children like? Or are your children conforming you? Hey, we, we're, we're in a generation now where the kids are, are having say so in the house. Right. We're, 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 listen, we're in a generation. That mom and dad step two when the kids start, start raising the sand. Mom, you know, I, I look back over, over, over my life. I don't ever remember having many decisions. You know, I never decided if we went to church. I never decided, you know, if, if I got to play ball. Somebody, somebody decided everything for me. 
And there was a reason for that. Because some of these decisions were too heavy for me. Amen. Some of these things that, that, that I was thinking I had to decide on was too much for me. And, and they loved me, and they didn't want to put that decision on me. I'm reminded of a, of a man who, his daughter, uh, uh, um, Miss Carrie Tinboom, is that the right name? Ten, Carrie Tinboom, is that her name? Um, anyway, she's on a train. She's 10 years old. She's on a train with her daddy. They go into a, go into a conference. Her daddy's there speaking. And she, 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 heard, she heard the word sex, and she heard about talk, and she asked her from, her from her older cousins, and she told her daddy, she said, Daddy, what is the sex talk? And she's 10. She said, Daddy, what is sex talk? And he looked at her, he said, Honey, there are just some things that you're too young to carry right now. She said, well, I don't understand what you mean. And he, he had his attache case. It was full of books. And uh, he said, Carrie, if you would pick that Picked that up. She went to pick it, could barely lift it. And as the train came to a stop, he reached over, he picked it up. He said, Sweetie, there are just some things that are too heavy for you to carry right now. Amen. And I'm going to carry them for you. Yeah. Do you trust me? Moms and dads, listen, you young people that are in here, you got to understand your folks love you. They love you. And, and, and there, there are some things they're going to have to carry for you. You might not know the answer to them for a long time. But you got to trust your mom and daddy to do it the right way. Because, they're, listen, they're trying to conform you into the image of Jesus. Yeah. Listen, they want you to serve Christ throughout your life. And it's got to, listen, it's got to start when they're three, four years old. It's got to start early. I, listen, I remember Emma, when she was little over at Hickox, her, listen, when she, when she was old enough to rebel and say, eh, back at her mama, she went outside. Many of the time, she was outside a little door, like right there, and she got popped on her little pamper backside right outside the door. And, 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 and she, she learned to sit in church. Hey, listen, today, today we have all kind of services, so our little kids will have to come in church, namely because sometimes we can't control them. Come on now. Some of y'all's kids are bad. <laughs> hey, raise them back, kids. You know, the thing is all kids are different. Man, some of them kids, you, listen, they bad. Some of them you can't, you couldn't strap them down to a board and make them act right. You know, that's just, that's just how some are. And so we have things for them. We want them to learn. I think children's church is a great thing. I led it for years. I think it's a great thing. But listen, we, we're trying to conform our children. Samson was telling his mom and daddy what they were going to do. You know what they did? They went and did it. They didn't even like it, but they went and did it. Why? Because they wanted him happy. Because they waited a long time for a son couldn't, they knew they couldn't have children. God showed, said it were, and they was going to spoil him. And spoil him rotten, they did. He was making decisions for them in their household. Be careful. Be careful about your household. Because listen, we're told to conform to the image of God. And as we're raising our children, Lord, help us. Help us to show them Jesus through our lives. My children ought to want to be in church and around the things of God because I want to. You won't lead anybody anywhere that you don't want to go. Think about that. You won't lead anybody anywhere that you don't want to go. If you don't want to go to church, your kids ain't going to want to go to church. If you don't want to be involved in the things of God, your children won't want to be involved in the things of God. Listen, it's pretty, it's pretty apparent. God bless these young people, man, who are going without their parents and getting saved. And listen, their lives are changing. And the, listen, the only, the only examples they have are men and women down there at God's house who are faithful to the things of God. Thank God for youth men and youth leaders and, and you men and women in this church that are loving on you. These bus kids show up, man. That Noah, man, he's wound up. That little Noah with the overalls every time you see him. Whew. Hey, listen, he hides. Noah just hides. I don't know where he goes. We seen his head stick out from around the door right there the other day. We was in church and was getting ready to sing. He just, he just peeked out around the side. I said, oh, no. Noah's hiding. He'll go hide under desks and closets around the church. That boy's bad. We need to tie a bell on him like a cow. <laughs> hey, there's going to be a time in his life, though, where he's going to hear the gospel. Yeah. And, you, and you folks have loved on him, loved on him, and it's going to be real in his little life one day. He's going to recognize. Amen. He's going to recognize. You know, uh, there's going to be a time that's going to get through. He, he's a little, he acts a little younger than he is. He's third grade. But, boy, he don't... He, 
But his house, I, I don't know what happens. I don't know. But what I do know here, he's getting loved on. This is going to change that little fella. And as, listen, you older youth and you boys, and especially you boys that come around here, pat him on the back. Tell him he's the man. Tell him you're thinking about him. Tell, tell him his shoes look good. Tell him him overalls he wears every time we see him look sharp on him. Because listen, that might be why he wears them all the time. But see, he needs to hear that because there's going to come a day he's going to hear the gospel at this church. Why? Because we're trying to be like Jesus. Lord, help us train our children to be like Jesus. I, I look back at Benoah and his wife, and, you know, they just loved her young, and they were so glad to have a child. Little did they know that God was in control of all of it. Even the mistakes they made, even the mistakes they made, God knew them. Even when they dropped the ball, even when they messed up, bought him too much stuff, not shouldn't have got him that four-wheeler, but did it anyway, shouldn't have bought him a truck, shouldn't have got him a shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have, shouldn't have. But God knew. God knew. And because they chased after God, the Bible says Samson ended right. That he called on God. And you know the power never was in his hair? Come on now. If it was in God. It, it, the, the hair cutting showed he backed away from his Nazarite vow. He backed right away from the things of God. And when he backed away from God, when he backed away from the vow, he backed away from the power. Listen, I want the power of Jesus on my life. I don't want to back away from the power. Maybe there's some of you here today that said, Brother Ray, I'd like to pull back up to the table. I want to get back in with the things of God. Listen, do, do, it, do it for your children. Do it for your church. Do it for, but listen, most of all, do it for yourself. Do it, so you can have, do it so you can have some peace. Get back right with the things of God so you can look around and say, Whew. listen, I, man, I ride and I listen. I was listening to some music there this morning. I listened to old Russ Taft. Some of y'all know him. Old, old boy died of uh, COVID the past couple of years, died during that COVID epidemic. Man, I was listening to him. He said, ain't no grave going to hold him down. He said, there wasn't no grave going to hold that old boy down. I'm looking forward to seeing my Savior. But until he comes, Lord, protect me so that I can be like you. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you and thank you for today. Lord, there's so many people here, and Lord, I don't know who all saved or who didn't. But Lord, I just pray that if somebody's here, they don't know you as their Savior, they come before it's too late. I pray for that Christian, Lord, who uh, is, is living the life. Lord, they're doing it the right way. And God, they're serving, they're, they're serving their church, they're serving their family, and they're serving their children. Lord, I just pray you'll continue to bless Lord, continue to give them peace. Lord, I pray for those Christians, Lord, today who, who's kind of drifted. Lord, and it's easy to drift. I just pray, Lord, you'll touch them today. I pray that you'll be first in their life. I pray that they'll once again look towards, look towards the east and look for your coming. Lord, I pray we'd be expectant and know that at some point in the future you're coming for us. Help us to be like you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would, please stand. If you'd like to come today, I wish you would. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, I can show you how. I can show you how. The King is coming. Amen. The King is coming. Are you ready? Are you ready to see Him? Some point shortly, some point shortly, He's going to be here. He's going to call all of us to know Him home. You say, well, Brother Ray, that's, that's a long way off. It's probably not so far as you might think. Time flies. I, I see these young people sitting here. Doesn't seem like that long ago I was sitting with them. Time's passing. Time's easing right on down. It's like a, it's like a constant flowing river. It's always moving. It's always moving. Are you saved? Are you saved? If Christ came today, would you go to heaven? Are you certain? Are you certain? Hey, listen, that's not something I'd leave up to... Up to a flip of a coin. I want to know. I've heard people say, well, you can't know that you can be saved. That's not what the Bible says. Jesus said, I, these things I said to you that you might know you have eternal life. Hey, I'm thankful that I know that I have eternal life. Man, it almost gives me a holy swagger because I'm thankful of what I have. I'm thankful. Are you saved? Are you saved? Don't leave this place without him. If you want to talk to me after church, don't leave. Don't leave. A young man come several months ago and <clears throat> come to me and said, come to me and said, I need to be saved. So I said, okay. And we, we got talking a few minutes. He said, I'm not leaving. Because there was a crowd of people here. And I, 
I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it. He said, no, no. He said, you do. I'm, I'm staying here. I'll be right here when you get done. I'm not leaving. Lord, give us that. Give us that, Lord. Give us a desire. Hey, I think the king's coming. I like that song. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. Sing it with me. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. Is he coming for you? Is he, you can know. You can know. You don't have to worry. You can know. But you have to choose. You see, you're on, you're, if you're not saved, you're on the road to hell. You're not, on some, you're not in some middle place to where at some point you've got to choose. No, no, if you're not saved, you've already chosen. You have to choose not to go to hell. And that's what Jesus did. He died on the cross so we'd have an option. We'd have an option. Choose him today. Um, don't forget we have a, a youth committee meeting in the uh, youth room. Uh, Brother Derek, if y'all would, uh, meet with him. About there. He might have a couple questions for you. But y'all go there and rake him over to Coles back there. And, and I appreciate y'all. And uh, don't forget we got a business meeting tonight. Have church tonight. We're uh, teaching on the ascension. If anybody would like to come, Acts chapter 2. If you'd like to come back with us tonight, study God's word with us. God's good to us. Hey, come ready to sing. All the men get ready to sing tonight. Need all the men on stage tonight. Oh, I saw that look. I saw that look, brother. Hey, listen, people are like, uh-uh. Y'all think about not coming now. I'm going to pray you choke on peanut butter 40 miles from water if you don't come. If you don't come back tonight to sing. And you don't have to sing on stage, but give me, give me, about, give me 10. Give me 10. <laughs> I need about 10 people, 10 men. We used to, uh, listen, I remember when I was here at Interim about eight or nine years ago, men used to get up here and sing. So don't be bashful. Don't be bashful. We'll get up here and sing. I see y'all looking around. I see one, two, three. There's 10 youngins right here. We'll all sing. Amen. God's good. Anybody have anything to say before we dismiss? Brother Ronnie, would you dismiss this place?